In today's session, inshallah, we will try to talk about something that is part of the Muslim culture during the holy month of Ramadan. Something that we do because it's a human need. We have to do it. And something that we do with the intention of getting closer to Allah because it is a form of worship. And that is to eat before the break of dawn and to eat after sunset. To uh, eat before the break of dawn, there's a meal that one, that all Muslims have before the break of dawn. This meal gives them strength to carry on the whole day without eating or drinking. This meal is called a sahur, the pre-dawn meal. And one has this meal not only to get strength to fast the following day, but he has this meal to fulfill Allah's orders because the Prophet ﷺ has instructed us to have this meal. So he said in one hadith, do have the pre-dawn meal because the sahur is a blessing. So you eat this food, although it makes you stronger, although it tastes nice, yet it is a blessing from Allah Azza wa Jal. So you can have it both ways, for this uh, life and for uh, the life after death. You're having your fun of having and enjoying this meal in this life, which is good. And at the same time, you're getting the reward uh, at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal for fulfilling and for following the instructions of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that the difference between our fast, the Muslims fast, and the fast of the people of the book, the Jews and Christians, is the pre-dawn meal. They don't have the pre-dawn meal. It's not part of their religion. So we have to have this difference between our fast and their fast by doing that. One might say, I'm strong, I'm full. I've already uh, eaten a good uh, fat meal like three, four hours ago, and I think I can go on for the, the next day or two without eating or drinking. So why should I have this meal? Again, we say you should have this meal because the Prophet ﷺ instructed you to do so. The guy said, I'm full. Do I have to uh, eat more until I'm stuffed? So we say, no, you don't but you have to have something at least, even a symbolic thing, just to show that you are eating or drinking this uh, thing before the break of dawn, so that you are following the instructions of the Prophet ﷺ. Our Prophet said, uh, Sahur is all blessing. This pre-dawn meal is, all of it is a blessing of Allah. So do not leave it, do not abandon it, do not skip it. Even if any one of you should take a sip of water. So consider, even if you're full, before the break of dawn, just have a small sip of water with the intention that this is your pre-dawn meal. This is your sahur. Because Allah, the Prophet says, والسلام, because Allah Almighty and His angels pray for those who have this pre-dawn meal. So you can imagine that? Can you imagine your, your size to this big, huge country you live in? Your size to this continent your country is in? Your size to this whole planet of Earth? Your size to our uh, solar system? Your size to our Milky Way galaxy? Your size to the thousands and thousands of galaxies? And all of this is nothing compared to the throne of Allah, the Almighty, except as the comparison is as if you throw a small ring in a widespread desert. Now, all of these planets and galaxies, they uh, are like a ring in a, a, a widespread desert compared to the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yet, 
if you drink this small sip of water, Allah Almighty and all his angels will pray for you. Prayer from Allah Azza wa Jal for you is to elevate your level and grade in heavens and to forgive your sins. And the prayer of angels for you that they would, they would say, Oh Allah, forgive this man who just had this pre-dawn meal. Now, who recalls this once He's sitting on his uh, meal and having, an, uh, having it and eating it. it. It's very rare that people remember this. But once you keep it in mind, you feel so small, so tiny in size, yet you feel so big in position uh, at the side of Allah because you are fulfilling Allah's orders. You're following the instructions of the Prophet والسلام, and you are receiving the blessing of Allah. Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty, is praying for you. The angels worldwide, well, universe-wide, are praying for you as the Prophet has said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Someone, and a lot of people do this, they tend to have this pre-dawn meal like three, four hours before the break of dawn. And they would go to bed. Now, is this uh, acceptable? Yes, it is acceptable. Is it? Uh, commendable no it is not commendable it is uh, the best thing for you to to do is to try and delay this pre dawn meal to the very last minute and this is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. this is what he used to do he used to have his pre dawn meal like 50 they used to measure time by actions so when one of the companions was asked what was the difference between, uh, how long was it, between the pre-dawn meal of the Prophet ﷺ and the actual prayer. So the companion said it was 50 verses of the Quran. So the average reading 50 verses of the Quran was probably like uh, 10 to 15 minutes. So he would have this pre-dawn meal and then pray. He did not say the call for prayer. And even if he meant the call for prayer, these 15 minutes would be enough for him to have a decent meal. So this means that the Prophet ﷺ used to delay the pre-dawn meal to the very last minute. And for us, this is uh, good physically because we want to take it up to the limit. We want to go exactly at, 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 to the last second. Why? It's, it's something psychological like, man, I'm going to... Uh, starve and I'm going to feel thirsty for the next 16 hours so I'm going to fill, fill it all up with food and water and, and everything that I can and those who are uh, have this nuisance may Allah Azza wa Jal uh, cure them from it those who smoke also smoke as much as they can before uh, the break of dawn of course smoking is forbidden now Regardless of what the people say uh, about cancer and, and, and these uh, things that uh, are caused by smoking, smoking itself is forbidden because it's a waste, it's a waste of money, it's a, a waste of health, and it gives you bad smell. See, Muslims should not have this bad smell. It, in, in, it's in our culture, it's in our religion, it's not due to our, uh, any region. It's in, in, in the core of our religion, our Islam, that you should smell good. The Prophet ﷺ never ever liked anyone to smell any bad smell out of him. All the companions that knew him, they uh, narrated to us that whenever you shook hand with him, with him, the smell of his hand is much better than the smell of musk. And this is the Prophet ﷺ. Maybe he's an exceptional case. Maybe he is the messenger of Allah. Allah is putting his blessings on him. Okay, let's look otherwise. Uh, in our religion, you have to at least shower before you go to Friday prayer. Now, bearing in mind that the Sahaba, the companions, did not have the means to shower uh, that much. Water was scarce and, 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 and it wasn't easy going like it's now. You just hit the showers and that's it. No. But it's essential for Muslims to shower before going to Friday prayer. If you eat garlic or onion, onions, you are not allowed to enter the mosque. 
to prayer. Prayer in the mosque is obligatory. Nevertheless, if the smell of your mouth smells garlic or onion, although they are uh, nutritious uh, food and they're, they're healthy food, they're good, a lot of our food contains them, nevertheless, if your mouth smells garlic or onion, it is not acceptable for you to go into the mosque to offer prayer to Allah Azza wa Jal. This tells you that your smell is essential. The way you look is important in Islam. 